Hi, this is Craig, and today we're going to learn about how to record electric guitar using a Fender and a Gibson in my home recording studio. Let's go. Hi, this is Craig from Craig Colley Music. Hope you're doing well wherever you are in the world today. Today we're going to learn about how to record an electric guitar, I almost said acoustic, an electric guitar using a Fender Telecaster and a Gibson ES347 Custom. If this is the first time joining us, you might want to look at the past episodes to get you up to speed where we're at because we're recording the song from start to finish, a song called Kenny's Song. We've already done the grand piano, we've done the bass, the drums, acoustic guitars, several acoustic guitars and did a lot of comparisons there. And now we're adding the electric guitars to give a little punch to it. And these will be very simple parts today. So let's get started. I'm going to put down the Gibson and we're going to start with the Telecaster. All right, I'm set up here. Got my headphones on, got my guitar plugged in. And we got several cameras in the studio today, so I'll give you a quick glimpse of that. Camera two is on the guitar. Camera three on the guitar. Camera four is an overhead looking down on the keyboard that I control the computer with, along with the keyboard I would use if I was going to play keyboard. And you can see the guitar here. Five is a shot from behind me here, seeing the multiple screens that we have. It's pushed down a little bit lower because we see the guitar today. Camera six is the screen that we'll be working from. Camera seven is another guitar angle right over <laughs> here. <laughs> Confused myself here. And then an overhead behind me of the whole studio setup. And this is the first time seeing the studio. Lots of technology in this room. Today we're going to keep this creative. Not too much tech talk. A little bit about the guitar. First of all, this is a, this is a uh, standard Telecaster. Uh, I've had this guitar probably, geez, I don't know, close to 30 years now. Used it a lot when I was touring, doing country uh, music out of Nashville for years. And actually had a special pickup and uh, bridge system put in it uh, through an endorsement that I had through a company. I, honestly, I don't even remember the name of the company uh, through the damn show years ago. It made the thing a little, little more twangy sounding, which at that time for the country music, I really liked the sound of it. Uh, but today, this song is really straight ahead, real straight ahead strumming. And we're going to pick up some accents that we've already recorded. I'm going to go over here to the sequencer. If you're here for the first time, you'll want to go back and watch the previous episodes because I cover a lot more of some of this tech uh, equipment that I'm using, some of the software, some of the hardware. And in the creative sessions, I, I don't want to go back into that all the time, so I'm going to stay away from that today. Really going to work through what's on the screen, which I'm showing you here. And this is the sequence that we're in. We're going to be recording the, the Telecaster track here and the Gibson track here. And we have a mixing board over here where we control the sounds. And to get a good comparison, everything's going in the same. I also want to show you, I'm going to put on my glasses here so I can see. This is also going through a plug-in. And this is through Waves. It's called GTR. It's, they have multiple uh, different sets of effects that you can put in line and then also to a guitar amp, in this, ca in this case, twin guitar amps. Now, the way I record this guitar is I'm coming in through a dry signal. It's literally coming in recording just what the guitar sounds like without, without any effects on the guitar at all. Even though you're hearing them, the guitar is dry. The reason for this is I can change all these sounds that I have in this tool kit here, this tool rack. Since you made it this far in the video, welcome to Craig Colley Music. If you'd like to receive more information and watch more videos just like this one, hit the subscribe button right now and ring the bell. That way you won't miss out on any of the free stuff coming your way at any time and later in the, in the recording. So I just find a general clean sound for this guitar and to compare both of them. Now this does have a little bit of a little bit of echo on it, a little bit, of, or I should say, delay. So it's going through a gate, it's going through an EQ, the phaser and the chorus are off, a little delay and a little spring reverb, and then going through a punchy setting on this amp setting. And I'll cover more of this in other tutorials, but that's what the sound is right now, and I can adjust it to anything I want later. That's the way I record. Buffers at 256, maybe a slightly high, uh, but I'm going to chance it and see if we can uh, use it that way. One thing I do want to show you, this part right here is a cable guitar part, and I'm going to play this because the electric guitar is going to work kind of in harmony with this track here. That part there. 
which was capoed up. This is, in C, is played in C. These are E chords. And I'm going to mimic that a little bit on electric guitar so that makes, makes that stand out a little bit more. Because when I do, when I play that along with the acoustic part that's already laid down, it just gives it a little more of an accent. So let's go and start this thing. And I've got my, I've already tested the guitar setup. Everything's good to go. Once again, if you are in this business, you definitely want to check your gear before you go ahead and start recording, particularly if you're doing something like what I'm doing right now to make sure everything's working before you actually uh, start the, uh, the process of recording. So here we go from the top. And I'm going to play through the whole song and come back and fix anything I need to do uh, after I have one run through it. And if you've seen it before, the red line is the record line and we come in and out and the green line is a, a marker to start and stop. All right, we want to let that thing ring as long as possible. One thing I want to show you on the guitar, I have the pickup in the center position here. So it's picking up both the front and both the front and the back. One thing I want to show you, I'm on the center position of the Telecaster, giving a little fuller sound between the front and the back pickup here. And the volume is up, tone is up all the way. Just a straight Telecaster sound. All right. Now we're going to switch and put on the Gibson and run that track again. All right, we've got the Gibson going now. Let's take a look at this guitar. This is a Gibson ES347. Believe it or not, this guitar I bought in a music store 
in Orlando, Florida in 1979, 80, I guess, 1980. And I was playing a big, uh, in a big showroom. We used to play these gigs where we had, uh, I don't know, like a thousand people in these rooms every night. And somebody had scoped out our band and knew exactly what they wanted, broke into the, uh, into the performance hall and stole just certain guitars and certain pieces of equipment. And one of them got stolen. I had an all maple Gibson. Anyway, mm -hmm. this guitar I actually found in a, hanging on a wall in a little guitar shop, probably the best guitar they had ever in their life uh, in Orlando, Florida. And picked it off the wall. The guy wanted 600 bucks for it. I did it in an instant because I knew the guitar was worth about 2,500. I don't think he knew the value of the guitar he had hanging on the wall, obviously. I remember carrying it out in a, in a uh, paper bag, but I already had a case because they took my guitar, my other guitar that was similar to this, but they didn't take the case. So I had a case for it already. It worked out great. So I've had this guitar a long time and I'm going to keep the setting similar. Tone all the way up, volume all the way up, pickups in the metal. This has a switch that allows this guitar to switch from a humbucker to a single coil within these pickups, which is really handy because uh, you, you can do a, lots of different variations with this guitar. But right now, we're just going to keep it fat. It's a little bit louder than the telly, so I'm going to turn the gain down on my monitoring of this right now. And let's take this from the top and see what this one sounds like. The Telecaster is now turned off. We're just going to record the Gibson, same track, plowing all the way through, and here we go.
All right, we got it. One thing, when you're ending a song like that and you hit that last chord, let it ring. Like I said before, and let it ring all the way out. And then you can slowly mute your hand over the strings and wait. And if you have an endpoint set where it's going to turn off the recording button automatically, that's great. If you don't, be very quiet and then lean over to your, to your keyboard and shut it off. And that way, on your sequence window, which would be right in this area here, you're not going to have a bunch of extra noise and clicks and stuff to clean up later. So if you keep that in mind when you're recording, that may help you in the long run. So let's go back and let's listen to, first we'll listen to Telecaster on its own. So here's the Telecaster. Now you can tell right off the bat that the Telecaster is a lot brighter than the other one. And the you can tell right off the bat the Telecaster is much brighter. So here's the Gibson. And it's really muddy, you know, in comparison to it. And it's probably way too muddy for this song. However, let's listen to the next part. Go back to the Telecaster. Turn the recorder button off so I don't hit that by mistake. The delay is a nice little feature there. One thing to note on the delay On these plugins, you can assign the sync to be the same tempo as the song. So the sync is on and it's syncing to our tempo here. So those delays will automatically be in the right time if you use the sync on your plugins when it comes to delays. Back to the sequence. Let's listen now to the Gibson. And they are going through the same set of plugins, nothing's different there. In a mix down, they would be handled completely differently, but we're just given a raw example of both guitars in this song. Much darker. Now, for comparisons, I always like to take these two guitars, pan them opposite sides, Turn them both on and listen to them together, which we'll do now. So give some imaging there. I'm going to solo them. So here I'm soloed, going back to that same passage. Here we go. Now there are some uh, timing issues and, and I'm playing these a little bit quicker than normal uh, just so I can show the comparison of the guitars. What I will do is go back and re-record these, tighten them up, or, and, and we'll go into an edit session to tighten all these places up because if there's one 
area in here where if I was to use both of them and one of them's hit before the other one, there was one I heard that was a little out of time. Most of them are pretty t tight. Another reason to, like I say over and over and over again, to rehearse and rehearse and rehearse and rehearse so you can just go through. I mean, you've heard this is played one time through in both these tracks and because I rehearsed a lot before I did this, <laughs> that's how it works. So I'm not coming here and rehearsing. Do not rehearse in the studio. Prepare for the studio, like I always say. Let's listen to it again in the mix. Now I'm going to turn off the acoustics and I'm going to turn off the grand piano. I'm just going to hear a guitar, electric guitar with bass and drums. Total different flavor to this thing. Now I'll add the acoustic guitar. Bring back the grand. I'm going to bring the guitars, the electric guitars have been much louder than they normally would be for recording purposes. I'm going to pull it back a little bit into the mix. Now this section right here that we just heard, this is what you can do when you rehearse. Listen how tight this section is here. Especially right here. It has a lot of dynamics, a lot of feel to it, and there's a lot of preparation for that. And it all happens just with knowing what you're going to play and practicing it until you're proficient at it so you can knock it out in a session one or two takes through. All right, now I like personally the Telecaster better. I'm going to turn off the Gibson. I'm going to put the Telecaster where it would no commonly be along with, right now we're just having a Martin guitar, acoustic guitar with a Martin capo here just for this comparison. And now I'm going to play this just with the Telecaster and the Martin and the piano. Now for comparison's sake, let's do the same with the Gibson, set the controls similar, back it up just a tad, and let's play that section again with just the Gibson guitar. Definitely much darker, but warmer. Now, since they're both panned over there, I'm going to put them both on. Both of them over to the side. It's 
a pretty cool sound too, actually. So there's lots of things we can do with this mix. I'm going to hard pan them all the way, bring the Gibson down a little bit, keep the telly up. Uh, Martin's all the way on this, this side here, and that arpeggioed capo guitar is almost in the center. I'll keep it going. All right, let's go back and hear that section again and just take the piano out and see what this sounds like with this, these guitars. Probably wouldn't have that A chord there. That works pretty nice too. So you can see there's lots of variations you can do once you have lots of different tracks recorded. Like I've said in other videos, Sometimes I don't know which, which track I'm going to use, but I'm curious which, what you think. Do you like the Telly better? Do you like the warmth of the Gibson? Do you like them together? Do you like them pan hard left and right? Do you like them together, kind of simulated a 12 string sound? What's your opinion? I, I'm curious to know. Please leave that in the comments. And in the next video coming as we record a song from start to finish, we're gonna edit these tracks, put them in a little more perspective and clean up any punches and things that had to be taken care of and edits on those and move forward to our next instrument, which will be, I don't know yet. <laughs> We're not there yet. So at this point, we've got the grand piano, bass, drums, acoustic guitar, a, a basically a rhythm electric guitar and building more oomph to this song as we go along. You see, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It doesn't mean, well, you're gonna use it all, but we got lots of options because still in my mind, I've got some ideas for what's gonna carry the melody along with the piano and it may not just be the piano. So working on that. Once again, if you're here for the first time, please subscribe, please like the video if you like it, and ring the bell, that way you'll be notified of other videos that come out and do a lot of premieres and when I go live. And please share this with anyone that you know that might be interested, that would be wonderful. And by subscribing and leaving a comment, that helps me immensely, I have no idea. I'm very transparent about that. And this has been a creative session, a little more tech talk in the next, in the next video, but let me know what you think. Do you like the Gibson? Or do you like Italy? Which is your favorite? And uh, just curious what your thoughts are. So please let me know. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. This is Craig signing off from Craig Colley Music. We'll see you next time. Take care. And um, that's it. I'm, I'm all done now. Go through this every time. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> Put this down before I drop it. Bah. Oh, didn't turn off. Now it's by for sure. <laughs>